Hello there people interested in robotics! Welcome to our research video row with a continuation on our recent series on bio-inspired robots. In the recent years, research into soft and biomorphic robots is coming closer and closer to the scientific mainstream. And it seems obvious that if you want to build a robot as good as a human body, you would probably like to start with recreating one. And one of the myriad of advantages that a human hand has is an ability to heal itself to an extent. While robots and the actuators of today may be extremely precise and robust, in general real-world applications where we hope to see by robots at some point in the future, there are a lot of situations in which injuries may be either unavoidable or unpredictable and therefore our robots should be able to cope with them. With this in mind, we introduce Shiro, a collaborative project for self-healing soft robots and its most recent paper by a chemist team from Free University of Brussels, a multi-material self-healing soft gripper, where they present a tendon-driven gripper which imitates human hand not only in its function and structure, but also in its self-healing property. Lots of soft body parts are currently done using multi-stage casting, a process in which layers of soft and hard materials are casted alternately on each other in different molds to achieve necessary properties. In large, this mimics an actual human limb with a variety of different tissues inside. In these situations, the weaker parts are usually the places of connection or interface of different materials. To alleviate this issue, Researchers propose to use DS Aldous polymers, which already have established themselves as a possible solution for self-healing materials. These polymers consist of two groups of subunit segments. One of these groups has chains ending with furan molecules and the other ones with malimide. Under normal conditions, these molecules are in state of constant equilibrium reaction. They form bonds between each other and are more inclined to form such a bond under lower temperatures while being fully separate and form a viscous liquid under higher. And while damaged, precisely these bonds are destroyed because they are the weakest one. A cycle of increasing and decreasing temperature is performed then to achieve the healing. By adjusting the ratio of furan and malamide in different subchains of the polymer and different proportions of these subchains, Chemists were able to create polymers with different mechanical properties, stiffness and elasticity, while maintaining similar density of these connections between subchains and similar yield strength. This results in the situation where we are able to produce a complex device with connection between its parts as strong as the parts themselves under room temperature. In the performed tests, samples of these polymers were connected under different temperatures and while connections formed under 80 degrees were fairly weak and fractured first after the application of the force, connections formed under 85 and 90 degrees were stronger than the more flexible samples themselves. The actual gripper then is built from a number of bio-inspired fingers produced from this material. To emulate the behavior of a human finger, it is segmented into soft and flexible phalanx, connected by a significantly stiffer backbone. Phalanx are then connected and actuated by a tendon, which goes through all of them. Their geometry is such that an angle between a pair of the fully flexed phalanx is 120 degrees, which allows flexing the end of the four-segment finger parallelly to its first segment. The stiff backbone in this situation acts as a spring, which reverses the finger to its initial position when the flexing effort is reduced. To produce a finger, different segments are initially cast separately from each other and the backbone in different Teflon molds. Afterwards, they are assembled and connected using the previously mentioned DLS alder reaction under 85 degrees. Healing abilities of the hand and the material were tested in a variety of situations. Usually, they were sliced and pierced by a scalpel. Using either the inherent flexibility of the structure or an external force, the walls of the damaged segments are joined and heated to the appropriate temperature. The repeated damage to the same part can also be sustained. There was no performance hit 
a trajectory miss after multiple attempts to pierce the gripper in the same place. Not only the end of Pactus, who developed using this technique. In earlier paper, the same group of researchers proposed to use this polymer in the construction of a classic pneumatic McKibben muscle. These muscles suffer a lot of tears and are significantly prone to leaks, which makes them lose their functionality. Self-healing performance of a muscle was comparable to the performance of the hand and showed no signs of leaks after the healing procedure. Having both muscles and grippers, the Shiro team soon may be able to construct the full self-healing robotic arm. So if you want to hear more about biomimetic robots, subscribe to the YouTube channel of The Robot Project. The Robot Project is an open-source project with the goal to build a robot as good as the human body. We created an open platform for robot development that unites researchers, companies, students and artists from a broad spectrum of disciplines. Robai means full-stack robotics, from mechanics to electronics to control to cognitive systems. Artificial intelligence is everywhere, and we work on all levels to make Robai truly intelligent. The Robai team aims to build better, more useful robots by adopting principles from biology and to help humans with musculoskeletal limitations through better prosthetics, better training and exoskeletons. So if you are interested and want to know more, check out our website roboy.org or the GitHub account github.com slash roboy. Thanks for watching another episode of RCube. See you soon and stay curious.